actually um, the Christian presupposition actually is the better presupposition to go and do history than an atheist position or a skeptical position. Now, this is not because all as atheism is is an absence of belief due to a lack of evidence. But what the atheist doesn't realize is that that doesn't wash because one has to deconstruct the language that the atheist is using. That requires intellectual tools of philosophy, linguistics. It's not enough. It's not as simple as to say, I don't believe in God due to a lack of evidence. In other words, the point is that the atheist, <coughs> whether they like it or not, will have presuppositions that impinge on their understanding of reality and that impinge on whether their presuppositions are consistent in the historical task. So there has to be a discussion on the table about the atheist presupposition and the Christian presupposition. Other presuppositions that uh, play for the Christian is the Bible. For the Christian, the Bible is the Word of God. The Old Testament is the outline to the New Testament, etc. For the Christian presupposition, there is a belief in God, the Creator. For the atheist, there's often a, a presupposition that religion is no good and is controlling. So all these presuppositions play and have a role in our interpretation of the facts. They have to be on the table for discussion before we get to the historical task. I would say that the Christian position is a positive position providing a positive epistemology, a positive historiography in order to do historical thinking. I would say that it's the only way Christianity gives you a grand narrative of history. That is to say that history has an, a meaning and a purpose and is moving towards a meaning and purpose. And if that's the case, that it means that if I'm doing historical inquiry, that it is purposeful, meaningful, and provides real knowledge. But if I believe in evolution, if I believe that history is not going anywhere, then why would I want to try and understand the past? The other thing in historical inquiry is that is secondly is the enlightenment had a big influence on how we understand history. The enlightenment was a particular cultural phenomena and yet that particular cultural phenomena has if that particular cultural phenomena is biased. Why is the Enlightenment position more superior than say a Japanese historian's methodology or a Chinese historian's methodology? So the Enlightenment presuppositions have to be critiqued before we do historical inquiry and debate whether Jesus rose from the dead. So the atheist assumes the Enlightenment position but the Enlightenment position can be challenged on many fronts. For example, the Enlightenment split reason and morality. It made a dichotomy between what is human. It put more value on reason than anything else. But actually human beings are actually not only reasonable, they are moral. And you cannot have reason without morality or morality without reason. But morality is at the heart of every intellectual task. You cannot do science without being honest. You cannot do philosophy you cannot do history without being honest. In other words, morality is at the very core of how we know. And the atheist position puts tremendous emphasis on reason and tremendous emphasis on the material understanding of the universe from a scientific perspective, which goes directly back to the Enlightenment position. But the Christian position is that we are not only rational, we are moral, that we live in a moral universe. This position is consistent as we look at the reality of each position. 
if the position of the atheist is correct about history that is to say we have evolved then that is to say that the reality of contingent uh, information is based on pure cause and effect of the, the implication of that is that the human human beings do not have free will that they are products of their environment they are products of DNA but they are just part of the material cause and effect that is the problem with the materialist perspective on life and it impinges on our historical task because why should we do historical tasks because a we are not moral because we have no free will but the Christian position is that the universe is a moral universe that we are morally accountable that when we make decisions and do decisions we are free to do so that means when we inquire in the historical task we are looking at the actions the free actions of human beings and are able to assess them and we can assess them in order to make choices free choices in the present so as we you can see that the Christian presuppositions are actually more amiable to the historical task than an atheist presupposition so presuppositions whether the atheist likes it or not or whether the skeptic likes it or not presuppositions have to be debated and discussed but does that mean we cannot come to a uh, an objective understanding of history what it means is we can come to the facts of history but it, it just means that our bias will taint those facts and so we have to be aware of how our presuppositions are tainting the facts and we have to make sure that we limit them to a certain extent but there is a, a value and central and important debate as to say to ask the question whose presuppositions are more consistent with the historical task this is a big debate that is not debated on campuses amongst atheists and Christians it is a big debate that is not properly been done in the academic world and needs to be done much more most academics will spend some time on their presuppositions but the vast majority of academics do not do enough reflection on their presuppositions and if they did they would actually adopt different methodology different presupposition if they realized how inconsistent the presuppositions are especially in the nature I could go on more and expand on that much more but I'll leave it there for discussion and debate for anybody who wants to engage with me on that please feel free to make comments if you make stupid comments you'll be blocked but I will leave this comment section open for anybody who wants to engage in the debate about presuppositions and the historical task so we have to consider presuppositions and then secondly we have to think about methodology our methodology of how we engage in um, the historical task is important uh, the criteria that we use the way we tackle the information is important often and I've listened to many many debates on the resurrection methodology if it is mentioned it's very rare maybe a little bit and often it's just to score points against each other in debate but methodology is important there is a responsibility in debates on the resurrection to lay down what your methodology is and to explain to the public why you've adopted a particular methodology out of many many debates that I have seen on the resurrection of Christ debates between skeptics and Christians methodology is not a, is not dealt with as much as it should be 
if you're going to use a methodology such as the Bayes theorem like Richard Carey, the atheist, it is beholden on you to be intellectually honest and to inform the public that your methodology is not used by most historians. A methodology, it should have a hermeneutical aspect, it should have historical criteria. What do I mean by comprehensive? Adolf Schlatter of 16th of August 1852 to 19th of May 1938 wrote over 400 papers on New Testament theology and New Testament studies. He ranked as one of the great theologians of modern times equal to that of Bultmann. His historical method is used in my debates. I have wanted to debate many atheists but I've not been able to find many who were willing to debate me on the resurrection but if they were to debate me on the resurrection part